Scientists, are you ready for a virtual field trip? From sunny Los Angeles, let's go to the California Science Center with your hosts, Mariela and Monica with a special appearance from D. Hunter White. Let's go to the California Science Center. Hi scientists, and welcome to our virtual field trips at the California Science Center. Before we get started, there are a few things we need to go over. virtual field trips will have a question of the day and today's question is what happens when the Sun shines on an object pause the video now to write down the question of the day in your notebooks and don't forget to write down or draw things that you observe in the video to help you answer the question of the day virtual field trips will also have a buzzword. Today's buzzword is warmer. Anytime you hear this word, be sure to make check marks or tally marks somewhere in your notebook to keep track of how many times you hear the buzzword. Can you count them all? Before I forget, there might be times we ask you to pause to think about a question. You'll see this sign and hear this sound to remind you to pause. Okay, scientists, I think we're ready to begin. Follow me. Oh man, it's really hot today. Oh, hey there, scientists. I didn't see you standing there. You might be wondering why I'm waiting out here. I'm actually waiting for a very special delivery. Wait a minute. This is interesting. The ground where my right hand is feels nice and cool, but the ground where my left hand is feels warmer. Hmm, I wonder why that is. I know. Maybe we can go into the California Science Center to find out. Follow me. Whoa, this is so cool. This tool measures temperature. The white means it's hot, and blue means it's cold. The colors in between help to tell us when something is warmer or cooler. Here we have the same temperature measuring tool, but this one is measuring the temperature inside the animal enclosure. Here we have another special tool that can help us measure temperature. Have you ever seen one of these before? You may have used it when you've been sick. Give up? It's called a thermometer. Let's use this tool to take temperatures inside the enclosure. Whoa! Look at all the different surfaces in this enclosure. Let's focus on this rock. Let's take the temperature of the top of the rock, right here. Hmm, I wonder if the side of the rock is the same temperature. Let's take the temperature of this spot. Wow, the temperature on the top of the rock is warmer. Hmm, I wonder why. Let's take a step back and notice the space around the rock. Maybe we might notice something we didn't see before. What do you notice, scientists? Oh, I see. Do you notice that lamp? Could that be the reason that it is warmer on that side? Why do you think the lamp is making one side warmer than the other? I see. The side of the rock does not have light on it. It's in the shade. But wait, why is there a hot lamp in here anyway? Oh, 
Oh, it's for the animals. These animals come from the desert, and the desert is a very hot and sunny place to be. So the animals here need a heat source to act as the sun to keep them warm inside of their enclosure. Hmm. Let's take the thermometer and compare the temperatures as we walk around the museum. I know where we can go next. Follow me. I wonder what the surface temperature of the leaves in the gecko enclosure is. Only one way to find out. Hmm, I wonder if all the leaves in the enclosure are the same temperature. Let's find out. Whoa, the leaves at the top are warmer than the leaves at the bottom. Why would that be? Let's take a closer look. What do you notice, scientists? Do you think the top and bottom leaves are getting the same amount of light? Do you notice any shade? Of course, just like in the desert zone, the lamp is a heat source. And that heat source is what is making the leaves at the top warmer than the bottom leaves, because the bottom leaves are not getting as much of the light and are shaded. I wonder if we could try it on water. Hmm. Come on, let's try it. Here we are in our rocky shores. This is the top part of our kelp forest exhibit. Which side do you think is going to have the warmer water? The right side or the left side? Whoa, the temperatures are almost the same, but the one on the right is a little warmer. Hmm. How can it be warmer? I don't see a heat lamp like the ones we saw in the desert corral or in the gecko enclosure. Oh, the sun. The heat lamps we saw before act like the sun because they are indoors. Out here, there isn't a need for it because we have the biggest and brightest light source and heat source right above us. Oh, I think I figured it out. Remember when I fell? One hand felt warmer than the other. Were you able to figure out why one side of the floor was warmer than the other? At first, I didn't know why, but now I realize that the sun is directly shining on this area of the ground. Whereas over here, the building is helping to block some of the sun's light, creating shade. That's why I was really hot, because I was directly under the sun. Oh, just in time, my package. You wanna see what's inside? My umbrella to protect me from the sun. Let's go talk to someone who can help us explore this a little more, come on. Whoa, what's up everybody? My name is Dee and I'm one of your guest services managers here at the California Science Center. Do you know where I am? I'm in the Rocky Shores Gallery. Come on, let's take a look. Let's explore the Rocky Shore. On hot and sunny days, it can get really warm out here. Do you see anything that can help keep us cool? Hmm. Yes, you got it, an umbrella. The umbrella keeps us cool when it gets really hot outside. But I wonder, how do the fish in the kelp tank keep cool? Can the fish swim around with their own umbrellas? <laughs> Probably not. But do you see something that can help keep our animals cool? Did you see this? It's called an awning. An awning is a type of structure that provides shade to outdoor areas. 
Whoa, take a look at that. Now here we have a different type of awning. This awning is over our touch tank. Now these awnings not only help keep us cool, but they also help protect the animals from the sun's hot rays. Now let's take a look at the creatures that these awnings are protecting. Scientists, what do you notice about how these creatures move? Did you notice how the fish swim quickly through the water? Or how about those sea stars crawling over the rocks? These important observations we made here at the California Science Center were the reason why we designed these awnings. Since the fish in the kelp forest have a lot of space to move, if they get too hot at the surface, they can swim down to the bottom where it's cooler. So the awning above the kelp tank is made of a material that only blocks some of the sunlight so the sun can warm the water just like it would in the ocean. Now the creatures in the touch tank don't move like the fish. They don't swim and are in shallow water so the water they are in can get too warm with the sun. This is where the awning helps. Imagine you were at the beach and you forgot your umbrella? What do you think that would feel like? Yes, you're right. It would feel really, really hot. And if you stayed in the sun too long, you might even get a sunburn. That is why these awnings are so important. The awnings help protect all of these animals and make sure that they don't get really, really hot. Keeping these creatures safe is important so that you can see them on your next visit. <laughs> Well, scientists, I hope you have fun exploring with me today. See you soon. Hi, scientists. Ready to get your body moving? Let's play hot or cold. When you see something hot, show me you're hot by fanning your hands to your face or by cupping your hands to your forehead for shade. When you see something cold, show me you're cold by shivering or wrapping your arms around yourself. Are you ready? Yummy ice cream. Is the ice cream cold or hot? How about this volcano? Or this tea? What about a bowl of ice? Or even the sun? What about the snowman? Great job! Now, make sure you have enough room for this next part because you need enough space to jump to the left and to the right. A picture of something cold and something hot will appear. I want you to jump to the image that I say. Once you've chosen a side, jump back to your original spot and try it again. Ready, scientists? Jump to the side that is... cold! Jump to the side that's... hot! Hot again! Cold! Cold again. Now, let's speed up. Jump to the side that's hot. Hot again. Cold. Hot. Cold. Cold again. Hot. Cold. Wow, scientists, you did so great. I hope you had a fun time moving around with me. Now, time to go back to the discovery room. What a great field trip. Let's go over all the things that we did today. We started our field trip going around the museum taking temperatures to understand why some surfaces were warmer than others. We learned that when a light directly hits a surface, it warms it up. But sometimes things get in between and that helps to create shade. Then we met up with Dee in the rocky shores to take a closer look at the awnings and how they are important to the creatures living there. Finally, we got our bodies moving by jumping around identifying things that were hot or cold. Now scientists, do you remember the question of the day? What happens when the sun shines on an object? 
can you use the buzzword to answer the question of the day? Warmer. Pause the video now to try to answer the question of the day using the buzzword. Okay, scientists, it's time to count our tally marks. How many times did you hear the buzzword? Pause the video now to count your check marks or tally marks. And the answer is... 12. We hope you had fun on this virtual field trip at the California Science Center, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. For more virtual field trip fun, visit our website.